The Atlantic Ocean has come to life. The Surfline forecast team is tracking two separate storms and swells with the main event still has not come together yet. There's a storm uh, developing south of the Great Lakes. It's going to push off the northeast United States coastline over the next 24 to 36 hours and set up one of the more substantial swell events that we've seen in some time on the East Coast and the Caribbean. This is Surfline Director of Forecasting, Mark Willis. Alongside me, I've got Lead Forecaster, Kurt Corte. We're live from our East Coast headquarters on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, taking a live look into Soup Bowl uh, in the Eastern Caribbean right now. That's got some fun, long period north northeast swell in the water with some fairly rare light trade winds. How you doing, Kurt? Doing great. Yeah, uh, we've been watching the, the Soup Bowl cam yesterday. Looked great there. There was really light winds. And uh, today, those trades have picked up a little bit. But to be honest with you, they've been pretty much honking nonstop over the past couple of months. Um, so this was uh, definitely a, a welcome reprieve from that. And I uh, saw some photos online of some of the surf there yesterday. And saw some pretty big sets come through here. Um, you know, when you have a long period north, northeast swell like this, a lot of times it can get a little funky there in the lineup at Soup Bowl and some of the other spots uh, around the island will turn on more. And a little foreshadowing of what we're going to get into a little bit later is this is just the first swell for uh, Barbados and some of the Windward Islands. They're going to see another round of substantial swell um, later in the weekend and into next week from a little bit different direction. Um, but it also looks like this zone is going to be one of the areas that it's probably going to be spared from widespread wind problems throughout the Caribbean. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, but the storm that produced this swell, um, not the same storm that's going to produce the swell that we're expecting for the East Coast over the weekend and into next week. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. <clears throat> yeah, that's correct. Over the past week or so, we've seen a, a series of pretty strong storms. Um, one that developed off the, the northeastern U.S. And, and moved away from us and then set up over the central Atlantic. And that was a hurricane force low, and it sent swell back to parts of the East Coast and the Caribbean uh, late last week and uh, over the weekend. And this storm um, was close on its heels and set up kind of near the Azores, and we saw satellite-confirmed wave heights within the system of uh, in excess of 40 feet. And again, a hurricane strength low. Uh, and, and most of the strongest winds were directed down towards the Caribbean and also in the other parts of kind of the eastern Atlantic. Um, so we actually have seen a little bit of this swell um, also propagating over towards the east coast, but the majority of the swell is actually heading down towards the Caribbean and specifically the eastern Caribbean. And look at some of our, some of our uh, offshore swell dashboards for Barbados. Um, it, it, they're actually pretty impressive right now. It's, you know, seven to eight feet at 15 to 16 seconds from the north northeast and easily trades about 10 knots. Um, Florida, as you mentioned before, has got some uh, a smaller amount of long period east northeast swell from the same storm. Here's a live look into Ponce and what that has some good conditions and some funnish surf. I think the buoys are somewhere in the you know two to four foot range at 12 to 14 seconds as some of the swell filters in there as well. Yes, they and they have uh, west southwest winds, so we're setting up pretty good conditions there. And you know, as you head away from the storm, obviously the swells traveled pretty far. Uh, the strongest winds weren't really well directed towards the east coast, so we're going to see a little less consistency there, and then obviously less size. Um, and uh, but yeah, fun surf. And gosh, I don't know about you, it looks kind of warm and nice down there. It does. You know, you know, we had a lot of fog up here in the Outer Banks this morning. It's kind of hard to see the surf, but the uh, same swell, same storm. Um, you know, Kurt, if you're giving the report for Ponce right now, I'm curious what, what you would do. Um, would you give it three to four, three to five, fair, good? But what would you give us here, Kurt? It uh, looks like a great candidate for the two to four. No, I'm just kidding. Um, internally, we always have a kind of a little bit of a joke, an ongoing joke about our wave heights. And we have, uh, you know, the two to four range is kind of a, uh, an ongoing joke where is it knee to shoulder high? Like, you know, it's kind of a, a wide range there. Um, if it's knee high, I'm probably not surfing. If it's shoulder high, I am. Uh, but in this instance, you know, we've been watching the cam for a few minutes. And it seems like there's plenty of waves in the chest to shoulder high range. Um, conditions are offshore. Obviously, there's a good amount of people there. It's kind of peaky and broken up, even though it is that longer period swell energy. So there's some pretty good waves. Obviously, there's somebody, a uh, couple pretty good turns there on his backhand. Um, uh, so yeah, I would go, f you know, fair to good, most likely. Uh, waist to shoulder high, fair to good. Um, and yeah, it looks pretty fun. I would take it. 
Yeah, I think I would probably go three to four plus and just good. I mean, you know, pulling the good looks, out looks fun. You know, I it's just we got a lot of ratings above good that we always talk about. You know, we got good to epic. We got or very good, good to epic and epic. So yeah, looks fun. You know, go for it. <clears throat> I won't call you out on that. I, I could go good. I can see that. All right. So switching over to the latest Lola wave height animation for the North Atlantic. And first of all, you don't see these colors, this or this widespread of a chunk of the Atlantic. There's a lot of real estate to have 20 foot plus seas. And, um, you know, it's, you know, we, we've had a, that storm in the north central and moving to the northeast atlantic that's been going on for some time now and it just we're getting to the point here this looks like tomorrow afternoon tomorrow night and into saturday as stuff really gets ramped up over the northwest atlantic off the east coast um tell us you know maybe some kind of the uh, maybe some of the peak seas that you've seen from the models from at least compared to the storm that that the users or the listeners and viewers are looking at now compared to what's coming off the east coast here in about 36 hours Sure. So that storm that uh, at the beginning there um, over towards the Azores, over the central and eastern Atlantic, that's the one we were mentioning that sent the swell down in the Caribbean is also giving some waves to the east coast. Peak season that actually we had a satellite pass that wasn't through the real meat of the storm. It was uh, kind of off uh, to the side a little bit and there was between 40 and 45 foot seas. So you could definitely say there's you know some bigger ones if we sampled kind of the main area there. So probably 45 foot plus seas within that storm. Um, in contrast, the one that's uh, expected to develop over the next 24 to 36 hours off the northeastern U.S., most of the available model guidance, um, looking at uh, some of the stuff out there, including some of the European wave model guidance, uh, pegging it right around 40 feet. Um, but, you know, this is an area of ocean that, that we've seen multiple times that a lot of times the storms and the resulting swell really outperform some of those forecast models. So I wouldn't be surprised if we actually got some observations that are in excess of 40 feet. And what's interesting in this case, obviously, is rather than that occurring way out in the ocean where you have some pretty significant decay between when it's generated and when it actually hits your beach, this is going to happen pretty much right on top of us. Yeah. And the other thing that the, the first storm that we're looking at now, since it's so far from us, not only does it decay, but it also allows itself to become organized and sort itself out by period, which is called dispersion. Uh, but you're, we're not going to have that luxury with the storm. So there's going to be some jumbledness and locations and a lot of wave periods arriving at the same time because they're not going to have that, again, that luxury of dispersion that you were describing before. Exactly. Yes. Uh, you're in a storm like that. It's well, say rather chaotic. Um, but if you think about it over on the West coast or, you know, some spots that see longer periods, well, energy from storm activity that occurs, you know, maybe a base in a way, uh, you see that dispersion, you see the longer period energy show first. And then as the swell period drops, you see the wave heights increase some as that swell propagates uh, through. In this instance, literally it's going to be all those seas and all those periods just right on top of um, us as it happens. Um, but as you head down to the Caribbean, there will be a little bit more time for some of that longer period swell to make its way out ahead of that. Speaking of wave period, now we've got the uh, Northwest Atlantic wave period animation. Um, and you see some colors that are common in the Pacific, but not quite as common in our part of the Atlantic Basin on the, on the west side. And that's you know, indicative of 15 to, second, 15 to 17 second uh, peak period waves. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's sometimes we see long period swells on the East Coast, but, you know, usually not this substantial. I think some of the the uh, the dashboards on some of our various forecast products are at least for here on Hatteras Island. You know, 15 feet of 15 seconds is a pretty substantial swell for here. Yes. When you think of that, a lot of times, especially a prolonged event, you immediately think of a tropical system. Um, but what's really unique about the one that's going to form off the northeastern U.S. as we head over the into the weekend is it's going to be long lived. The storm is not really going anywhere. It's going to drift to the southeast and then kind of to the east and hang out over the central Atlantic for several days. Um, so there's, you know, several factors that um, are related to that that are going to make this a prolonged event, a long period event. And, um, you know, some of the biggest surf that, that many spots have probably seen in, you know, what, several winters. You know, one really great thing about 2018 is that we, we saw the storm coming together a long time ago in the models. And there was actually pretty good agreement uh, amongst the various global models that we look at almost seven or eight days out. I mean, some of the details are going to change, but, uh, you know, just a few years ago, that wasn't the case. Um, and it seemed, you know, every year the models get a little bit better. We get a little more confidence in our extended forecast, but still it's, 
you know, the details can make or break if the if the surf's going to be good or not, especially because of local winds. But for example, if this storm sets up maybe, you know, 50 or 70 miles closer to the coast or further offshore, that's going to mean somebody's going to get offshore winds and somebody doesn't. But it, it is nice that we at least have some confidence further out than we used to in some of these major events. You know, in, in line with that, one of the products that we've started within the past year is our long range forecast outlook. And, uh, you know, as we were kind of getting through the the really cold weather in, in December, and then we had the switch and it got warmer in, in to parts of January and into February. Um, I know Mike Watson was on the long range forecast for the East Coast for, for a while. And one of the things we were really looking at was this change in pattern. And uh, we have a product that you know, I think some of us have posted on our social media platforms where uh, it's actually a look at the next two weeks and how our uh, the wave models predict uh, the surf's going to be over our given basins for the next two weeks compared to climatology. Um, and through the bulk of winter, we've really seen a real negative anomaly over parts of the Atlantic. Um, but as we transitioned um, into the back half of February and into March, we started to see a signal take place of uh, those above average uh, seas over over parts of the Atlantic. And that's really come to fruition. And, and you know, the, the two systems that I mentioned beforehand that were in the central Atlantic and then now this one um, is a pretty positive signal over the next two weeks, which is in contrast to what we saw earlier in the winter. And of course, the other place in the world that we saw that nice signal was over the Caribbean Sea of enhanced wave activity, um, not so much right now, but a couple of weeks ago, and really for a lot of January and February. And, you know, I, I think we've all seen several photos come out of the Caribbean side of Central America over the last month or so. Those guys have just scored down there. Yes, they definitely have. And that's that's actually switched a good amount um, uh, since that time. And another area that we were really focused on is is over in the uh, the Tasman Sea. And uh, of course, the Gold Coast had a great run of waves there from uh, from the cyclone. So let's you know talk about what we're seeing on the screen right here right now is an animation from the GO-16 satellite that's showing the storm that's getting together right now in the Great Lakes region, uh, sending widespread cr cloudiness over the eastern United States. Just getting back together now, but as it pulls offshore in 24 to 36 hours, it's going to do a lot of things. It's going to produce quite a bit of wind up and down the East Coast. I think we've got a high wind watch here in the Outer Banks. I know they're already talking about potential school closings and things like that. But more importantly, what our listeners are probably caring about is that storm is going to develop probably tomorrow night into Saturday and, and really get going on the swell department. And we're really targeting kind of three or four locations that we think are going to be really good. One of them is Long Island, some other spots in New England, um, you know, maybe a couple of spots in the Mid-Atlantic region that are protected from North Wind um, and the Eastern Caribbean Sea. Mm -mm. That's correct. Yeah. And, and as you're mentioning how we had a good idea that this was going to happen seven, eight, you know, maybe even 10 days ago that we were going to have a strong system moving off the, the Northeastern U.S., you know, you, you have a small window there where spots like Long Island where you're facing south, if the storm forms, you know, a little further north than expected, you can have blockage by Cape Cod and, and Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard, and that can, can actually limit the amount of surf, uh, the easterly swell that gets in there. Um, so that's kind of the major challenge in, in forecasting a, a lot of the spots up in the northeast is you have so many little different changes in the coastline and, and small changes in where the storm actually sets up can have major impacts on the amount of surf you see. So we're showing the the new regional forecast product on new.surfline.com right now for Barbados. And, and and first of all, before I go into some of the details of the data on here, uh, we're still probably going to make a couple of tweaks to this product uh, to make it look a little bit better. Send us feedback. Um, we want to hear from you on um, how you like the new forecast pages. It's evolving. Um, we feel like we're getting fairly close to a, a solid product, but we know we still have a couple of things to do. But this is the, the Barbados East Coast forecast that Mike Watson put out um, yesterday and uh, some numbers that you don't see here that often because Barbados has, usually has substantial trade one activity and some problems uh, from that on the East Coast. Um, but it looks like, uh, you know, they're gonna have trades, but there's gonna be, you know, first of all, they're not gonna be that strong. Second of all, you see, you know, some southerly component in those trade winds uh, as you move through the weekend and then eventually actually maybe going southeast as they, we have a little weakness in the pressure pattern ahead of the front that's going to be attached to the big storm that's going to move off of the, uh, the east coast here in a day or a day and a half or so. But lots of swell. You look at the offshore swell dashboard. Uh, what they're seeing right now is uh, the north-northeast swell from that first storm we talked about earlier. 
Um, and that's going to slowly fade through uh, the end of the week and into the weekend. But then by early next week, they're going to see a north northwest swell from the second storm, kind of the main event, um, you know, from a, a weather perspective, in my opinion, um, and another good size swell into early next week. Yeah, so Barbados has its own forecasting challenges. Um, obviously, you have some islands to to your north and northwest there. So depending on exactly where a storm sets up, sometimes you can have pretty significant blockage to northwest swell events. But, but based on how we're thinking the storm's going to evolve and how it's going to slide into the Atlantic, we're thinking it's going to uh, set up in a favorable location. And again, with those light winds, um, Barbados is definitely looking like a standout here over the next seven to 10 days. Yeah. And, you know, again, they're, they're lucky that they don't have the trade wind to deal with like they, they often do. They're going to have, uh, again, pretty light trades over the next three days and then wind shifting more southeast uh, and overall pretty light into the end of the weekend and early next week when they're going to start looking for that next swell. Um, <clears throat> Kurt, I'm curious. Uh, it looks like we just switched to the uh, western Long Island, Nassau and uh, Queens forecast here. Another place where we're expecting to get pretty good. Um, especially as we move through the weekend early next week. And Kurt, you're on this forecast. I imagine that you've probably looked at the forecast for this part of the world closer than, than anyone in the world. So why don't you give us a breakdown of, of what everybody's seeing here? Gosh, I hope no one's looked at it as much as me. <laughs> I feel bad for them. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's a pretty challenging situation here. Again, it really depends on exactly where the low sets up and, and how much of uh, the winds to the northern part of this low are within the swell window for Long Island. Uh, so that's the main forecast question here. And I think tomorrow is going to be kind of a dicey day. You're going to see the strengthening low offshore, pretty gusty offshore winds. And there's going to be a mix of a couple of different wind swells and swells in the water. Um, overall, strength of the winds and stuff, I'm thinking tomorrow is not going to be that great of a day to surf um, for Long Island. Uh, as we head into Saturday, I think some of that easterly swell, as you can see on our dashboard there, does fill in through the day, looking biggest late in the day. Um, but again, the, the direction there, you can see we're showing east-northeast at 73, 76 degrees. That's right along the edge of uh, the swell window there for, for that part of Long Island. So kind of a close call on exactly how much size it could be. Um, but I think the numbers that I have here are in line. I may actually be bumping up the AM um, a little bit based on some of the most recent guidance. Uh, the major thing that you're going to be impacting our surf there, as you can see, our arrows, um, pretty strong offshore wind. So it's going to be challenging conditions as this easterly swell comes in. A lot of times with these longer periods, uh, you also have some drifty surf, but you can have some pretty good lefts coming off some of those groins along western Long Island. Um, into Sunday, and it also looks like as the low slides to the southeast, we'll have a little bit wider area of those easterly winds on the northern side of the low. And that's going to set up a pretty healthy pulse of east to east southeast swell for Sunday that continues into early next week. And it looks like favorable winds. So the, for those that are just joining this live session, that smart guy that was just talking is uh, lead forecaster, Kurt Horte. Um, I'm Surfline Director of Forecasting, Mark Willis. Thanks for joining this. And again, we're talking about the uh, the crazy busy activity that's going on in the Atlantic right now. Uh, we're looking at our uh, Western Long Island forecast for Nassau and Queens and uh, quite a, it looks like a, a pretty good forecast that Kurt's issued here. Um, so definitely check that out. We update this product twice a day. And of course, this is the new regional forecast product that we um, are in the middle of launching right now. And one of the big changes compared to our legacy website is that we um, we used to only do a forecast for the AM hours and now we do AM and PM. Um, maybe tell us how that's helped you communicate the changes in this forecast uh, over the next seven days. Yeah, I mean, Saturday is a great example. Um, you're looking at really strong offshore winds and, you know, maybe kind of dicey in the morning. You have a higher tide first thing right around dawn. And we're going to expect to see that easterly swell build through the day. So in the past, that was pretty hard to communicate. You know, you may have the winds backing off just a little bit, the tide dropping maybe towards midday, swell rising. So it was kind of like, what kind of number do you put in there? What rating? Because maybe between 7 and 9 a.m. is the worst possible time to surf. But after that and into the afternoon, it gets, you know, much better. Um, so you can see here, you know, in the morning, um, you know, we're keeping it west, waist to chest high, fair to good conditions, offshore winds. Higher, higher tide going to slow down the surf a little bit, but as more swell fills in, the winds may back down just a little bit and we have more favorable tides in the afternoon. So I bump conditions up to good. And of course, you know, we, we also have, uh, you know, a, a higher resolution product in our spot forecast, you know, to complement this. 
you know, if you want to, you know, do some of your own investigating and figure out what spots that you want to target during the swell, you know, definitely check out our 17 day spot forecast. Um, you know, we, we put a lot of time and effort into that. We've got a data science team that has upgraded, um, our, the data that goes behind those products. So check those out. Um, a lot of fun stuff that goes behind producing all of the spot forecasts that our data and modeling team does. And also the product you're seeing here, which is our regional forecast product that Kurt Corte issued earlier today. Um, all right. So what we're seeing now is, you know, Charlie Hutcherson, one of the forecasters on our team, uh, wrote a story last night that compared the upcoming swell um, to uh, two past swells that were pretty significant. One was uh, the March 2008 event that we called in a paper we wrote the uh, the St. Patrick's Day Super Swell, I think. Um, and then another one from 2015 that was a pretty substantial event, especially for, I remember, Florida and parts of the Caribbean. But some pretty impressive numbers here if you compare some buoy readings to from those two uh, memorable analog events to the one that we're expecting uh, over the next few days. For example, you look at uh, Long Island here, um, you know, th those past events were 11, 12 feet, nine or 10 seconds. This one's going to be stronger than that. Uh, Virginia beach buoy four, four, zero, one, four, the same thing. We see uh, quite impressive numbers from the March 08 and February 15 storms, but you know, 19 feet, um, you know, is, is pretty substantial and, uh, you know, Florida and Puerto Rico, the same thing. Um, you know, this is at least forecast to be a, a pretty amazing event. And, um, one of the more substantial events we've seen in a long time. Yeah, it's hard to believe that 2008 event was 10 years ago. Um, but it's it's really interesting to look at these numbers because you can see, and I think back to where these storms actually were located and and uh, how that impacts the numbers and the and the swell period that that we saw. And you know, the March 08 storm was right south of uh, Nova Scotia and really strong winds directed down towards the Caribbean. And you can see that reflected in the 17 second period during the peak of that swell. Um, the February system actually kind of pushed off of North Carolina more, um, which is uh, which is a little different than than that scenario and a little different than what we're experiencing here over the next 48 hours. Um, and you can see how that reflected, you know, Long Island, nine second stuff. But uh, again, the longer period energy from Virginia Beach down into Florida and, and also the Caribbean. Uh, but yeah, this is a pretty impressive storm. Even modeled forecast uh, winds are going to be right around hurricane force, uh, which isn't unheard of. This That part of the ocean there, like we see that all the time. Um, you know, we see hurricane force lows in the Northwest Atlantic rather frequently, but this system is going to be huge. <laughs> it's, I mean, uh, you know, you look at swell generation, you don't, you don't just look at wind speed. You look at the width of the fetch, the length of the fetch, and, you know, maybe where the system lacks what some other storms have had in the past, it makes up for on the sheer size. And the other really amazing thing is the numbers we were just looking at, like for the Caribbean, was it 18 feet or, or whatever it was? Um, as you mentioned before, <clears throat> a lot of times the models are too low in these events. You know, actually, I, I would be willing to say that at least 60 percent of the time, if not 70, the models are low in these type of events. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's definitely the, the case. Um, as I mentioned, when we were talking about you know the expected wave heights over the Northwest Atlantic with this storm, um, predicted to right around 40 feet, 35 to 40 feet, and I wouldn't be expected to see it exceed that. Um, you know that manifests itself down the road as you know bigger wave heights and longer periods. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how the models do compared to uh, to what they're projecting at this point. But you know if it gets close, it's a pretty substantial and historic storm. And of course, if you want a, a, a detailed analysis of those three separate events that we were just talking about, you can read the full article on Surfline that Charlie Hutcherson wrote last night. It's a, it's a great piece. Um, and we've switched over to a live look at Soup Bowl and Barbados. Um, you know, it's, we're in between sets here right now, but solid north northeast swell in the water there. Um, not from the same storm that is going to be producing the swell for the East Coast over the weekend into next week, but an equally uh, or almost equally as impressive event that um, we've been tracking for several days now. And th the nice thing about Super Bowls over the last couple of days has had pretty light winds. They have, yes. So the past several months, uh, the trade winds have been honking there, and uh, it's definitely nice to have a little reprieve from that. And again, you know, pretty solid north northeast swell. I saw a set hit um, early in the afternoon. It was every bit of double overhead, if not a little bigger. But you know, they have, when you have these longer period swell events here, especially out of the north northeast direction, all that water is forcing its way in. It's got to find a way out. So a lot of times you'll get kind of a little bit of a rip 
uh, coming up the face on, on some of these bigger sets. So the Atlantic Ocean has come to life. The Surfline forecast team is tracking two separate storms and swells. The main event coming together near the Great Lakes right now is going to push off the Northeast United States coastline in about 24 to 36 hours and produce one of the more substantial swells we've seen in a, a, a long time. Uh, this is Surfline for, uh, Director of Forecasting Mark Willis. Alongside me, I've got lead forecaster Kurt Corte. Um, we have, looks like, switched gears now. We're looking at uh, Melbourne Beach, Florida. We got a couple of forecasters down there, don't we, Kurt? We do. Uh, uh, you know, the high definition cams there, we can check and see if they're skipping out on work, if they're there down there at the beach. Um, that cam was recently upgraded, and, and you can see that it's uh, definitely an improvement from what we had. And fun surf there, again, that same low that sent surf down to the Caribbean that we just saw at Super Bowl is also sending some longer period energy in the two to three foot plus range on the buoys at somewhere between 14 to even 16 seconds I saw. And that's manifesting itself into f some fun surf in the three to four foot plus range. And we also have offshore winds, which is setting up uh, favorable conditions. And gosh, it looks warm and nice. It's kind of chilly and foggy here. Yeah, it is very foggy here. Actually, um, I was about to go for a surf earlier, but I don't know if I could have even seen. I think the visibility, <clears throat> gosh, around 10, 11 a.m. had dropped below a half a mile. So um, definitely not the case here in sunny Melbourne Beach, Florida. Uh, I was, I'm looking at some wind observations on, on my screen. Uh, you can't see it right now if you're, if you're watching it on Facebook or YouTube, but um, Almost the entire state of Florida has west-southwest winds, 10 to 15 knots, until you get to roughly the Treasure Coast, and then it looks like there's a, a thermal effect going on there. There's a little bit of a sea breeze. Winds are out of the southeast to south, 10 to 15 knots, so not as clean um, further down the coast. But, of course, they're not getting the same swell because of the Bahamas. Exactly, yes. So the location of that initial low being way out there in the Atlantic, swell direction is more east-northeast. Um, so you start to get some, some blockage by the Bahamas as you head down the Treasure Coast into the Palm Beach. Uh, this next low will be interesting because it looks like it's going to set up where you'll see some northeast swell. So some of that's going to make its way further south into some other parts of South Florida. Um, well, it looks like we switched gears and now we're looking up into North Florida. This is our uh, Ponce Inlet Cam. Uh, definitely a couple of people surfing there. Offshore winds and then again the same swell, a little east-northeast swell, longer period stuff. We chatted a little while ago and you said uh, you wanted to know what I thought the surf was like here. Um, so uh, what, what rating would you give it if you were on the reports here? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be picky here. I mean, as you pointed out earlier, there's some nice peaky conditions. It's offshore. It's in the zone that a lot of people like three to four foot plus, probably waist to shoulder high. Um, it's makeable. You know what? I'm saying three to four foot plus and good, Kurt. That sounds great. I tell you what, no booty sounds good to me. Um, but uh, yeah, so fun waves down there. We had a little bit of surf uh, for spots up into uh, the Outer Banks and even up in New England. But you know, today on the East Coast, the highlights definitely been Florida. Um, they've seen some fun surf and actually a pretty good run of waves there. Um, really, over the past few weeks, they've had some some decent surf. I know uh, Mike Watson, one of our, our forecasters down in Central Florida, has been getting some time in the water and um yeah there's been some some fun surf and i actually got a report um just the other minute from my brother he's down in the uh, the virgin islands and uh he reported that there's a that same north northeast swell making its way there offering surf in the head of high range a couple feet overhead at some of the better spots um and fun surf there so not quite what they're seeing in barbados but you know the virgin islands are kind of their own little beast when it comes to some of these swells so, Kurt, I think we're going to wrap up here in just a couple of minutes. Um, you know, before we do that, let's maybe break down this uh, just a super high level forecast discussion for the East Coast and the Caribbean. What to expect over the next several days and also where to go for more information, because you're in here uh, more than eight hours a day cranking out several forecasts. Um, where can people find all those details? Yeah, so if you're in the Caribbean, that north northeast swell is going to, you know, peak today and kind of be on the fading trend over the next few days. Um, up on the east coast, we're going to see rapidly changing conditions. Up in New England on third on Friday, um, building wind swell, strong winds. Uh, it's going to come up into the well overhead, double overhead plus range, kind of as big as it can get for a lot of those locations that are exposed up in New England. Um, but most spots are going to see unfavorable conditions through the peak of this swell. And it looks like the southerly facing beaches uh, up there are going to be the call. Uh, and as the low kind of slides away, uh, we'll see some of that swell filter down into Florida. 
And potentially, as we look into the next week, we'll be we'll be eyeing maybe some better conditions as, a, as another frontal system approaches towards the middle part of next week. Pretty solid swell from that low over the Northwest Atlantic, and it go down to the Caribbean. Uh, the major forecast question there is local winds as uh, the size of this system uh, may impact some of those winds down into parts of the central Caribbean. Uh, so if I was heading down there, I would keep an eye on the eastern Caribbean and uh, make that my target. I'm not going to compare this to Sandy, but it feels like, you know, it's a, I will. Okay. The size <laughs> of it is almost, it's almost similar where Sandy at one point after it, you know, started to become extra tropical was almost the size of basically the Bahamas to Nova Scotia. And this system is not going to be too far behind it. It really is. I mean, if you're going to ask me the most impressive part of the storm, as we were discussing earlier, it's not necessarily wind speeds because it looks like those are going to peak right around hurricane force, you know, um, 65, 70 knots, somewhere around in there. Uh, but the sheer size, uh, it, it's just, uh, you know, the areas that are maybe gale force or storm force is going to be really significant. And and that's what's going to drive this large, long period swell event um, for parts along the whole western uh, part of the basin. So that was Kurt Corte talking about the forecast uh, upcoming for the Western Atlantic. If you want to read all of Kurt's analysis, you can check it out on surfline.com or new.surfline.com, our new website, all of our mobile products, our mobile app. Uh, check all that stuff out. Kurt's hard at work on updating his products several times a day. Um, I'm Surfline Director of Forecasting, Mark Willis. We're going to be doing this probably several times throughout the event that is going to be a prolonged event for you know probably a week or so. Um, so be sure to like our Facebook page, um, you know, monitor our YouTube page. We'll be going live several times through this event uh, to give you the latest uh, conditions um, and the forecast as it relates to this situation going on in the Western Atlantic that is impressive. And here's a nice set that's rolling through Soup Bowl right now. Um, we're going to leave these cams running so you can watch them for a little bit longer. Um, and again, I'm Surfline Director of Forecasting, Mark Willis, uh, alongside me, Kurt Corte. Thanks, everyone.